Thanks for staying with us. Of course you would, I know. Uh, Mercedes Royal, Academy Award winning actress in Montauk, right now at Gurney's Inn, overlooking the ocean. And she talks about her breakthrough. She gets it. She is there. She said, that's it. It's now or never. Now I'm going to get big. Well, that was, that was the beginning. I, I sort of always had this idiotic belief that I was... I had some kind of uh, destiny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that silly? Um, no, but no, no, no. Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, but, uh, um, yeah, so there I was at the public, and I finally got this job, and it was put right in my lap. I didn't even have to audition for it after, really, 10 years of struggle. Yes. Um, and it, it just fell like manna from heaven. Um, after I finished that, I was offered another job at the public. Then I was offered another job. Then it was offered a job because a girl on uh, Broadway broke her, uh, going into Broadway, a, a show going from off-Broadway to Broadway, I'm not Rappaport, mm -hmm. the woman in it um, broke her leg. Mm -hmm. And they asked me to go in it uh, a couple of weeks before it moved to Broadway, and I moved to Broadway with mm. it. During that time, um, the, the casting people started to get to know me, and I was brought in for Big, and I played the mother in Big. And then, you know, uh, uh, the next thing that happened was Married to the Mob. Suddenly, Jonathan yes. Demme wanted to see me, and that, that went really well, so I did that. And then I did other people's money off Broadway, and then I got into, eventually, Fisher King. And then it, it was like once it started to happen, it was like dominoes But we're falling. not going to let you get away just, oh, well, Fisher King. We, you, you know, Fisher King is Fisher King. You were, you were the movie. You are the movie. Anybody who sees the Fisher King or has seen in s seen that movie knows it's it's about you. I mean, no, it doesn't matter what anybody else that. says. That's how I feel. <laughs> Thank you, Ingrid. <laughs> Can we call my agent yeah. right now? <laughs> um, uh, well, no, it was actually a, 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 an extraordinary foursome: Amanda mm -hmm. Plummer and uh, and Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeff, who just won the, the Academy yes. Award, finally. Yes. Um, I found a card for him. <laughs> I just sent it out to him yesterday. I, I, I'm just thinking of it. It's on my mind. I found this little card with this um, very smug-looking little boy of about six with a bow tie on and glasses, and he's holding a, a, a Oscar, mm. and it just says underneath, "It's what we have instead of God." Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is perfect. Yes. You know, because he was. Um, so gracious to me uh, when I when I um, won the Academy Award. How c how could he not? How could he not? Well, you know, it's it, it, we we all we, we have mixed feelings. Sure. We people in the theater and film, you know, and uh, uh, there were uh, some other extraordinary performances in that film, and it as as luck would have it, you know, there's a certain feeling of inevitability sometimes mm -hmm. about uh, I don't know why. I was chosen, and I don't know why I was chosen out of the five women that I was nominated with. I don't really know why. I think it has something to do maybe with the material itself, mm -hmm. and that the material itself appealed to people. Mm -hmm. uh, because you, you look at any lineup, even this, this year. Uh, the, vulner the vulnerability. I mean, you are the epitome of, uh, you're known to play roles nobody else would touch. Well, I don't know about that, but you know, I, I know. I'm, it I takes. I'm just it falling takes in love with you for saying these things, <laughs> Ingrid. Um, You're welcome. Uh, uh, I mean it. Uh, uh, well, um, Robin Williams though was in that. I mean, it was it was four yeah. great people, but it, it was just the role. I think it was written by Richard Legravenese, and um, of all the writers I've worked with before or since in in film, any kind of film, television film, uh, feature film. Uh, he writes for women. He writes for women with a knowing uh, uh, instinct, the way Tennessee Williams wrote mm -hmm. for women mm -hmm. with a knowing instinct. And so it was my role in that film and how he wrote it and how sympathetic he was for it. And because there was a great deal of Richard actually in that role that I think, you know, on an unconscious level, it just, it just kind of powered through. Could it be that uh, you're just made or want to put your soul on the table in these particular moments, what you might not do all necessarily in your private life, but there at that moment, putting your soul. 
Yeah, but you, have to, you have to have the material that enables you to do it. And if there's one thing I've gotten in trouble for all my life, it's, it's, it's the English major in me. It's, it's getting scripts, you know, for films and, or, 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 you know, television shows or, or meeting on them and saying, I'd love it. I'd love to do Is there any, any way we could, you know, make this script a little bit more interesting? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Make this character a little more tasty? Yes. You know? So Push input a little is further. there, yes. Yeah, well, it is. Sometimes it's most welcome. More often than not, it's, it's not welcome, mm -hmm, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I've had to be very careful about that. It must be very difficult to uh, give input with people like Edward Albee. Oh, Edward, no. Edward, <laughs> you, you have to um, uh, be very careful about those <laughs> kinds of things. But with, with the great ones uh, like Edward, you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I went to Neil Simon and asked him to just change a phrase once. And um, it was in fear and trembling, you know. Boy, mm -hmm. And uh, but he was very nice about it. He said, "Go ahead, change it." Mm -hmm. So we were in previews, and I changed it about three nights. And I was thinking, "This doesn't work. This doesn't work." And then I went back to the way he wrote it, and I went, "Oh, that works." Okay. <laughs> and uh, it took me, but he was he was sweet enough to just give me a chance to realize my idea simply did not work, okay. you know? Yes. And he waited for me to come back to exactly what he'd written. And but that's I think exactly they, they also did. must be thrilled that the actor or the actress is actually really putting her heart into it and, uh, and is going for it and is trying to make a change. What she feels is appropriate. Obviously, it didn't work this time that particular moment. No, it's, yeah. it's always, you know, it's, it's, um, it's wonderful when you can collaborate a little bit with a writer, but I certainly, you know, don't want people um, messing with me, and most writers don't want actors messing with them. We all are pretty protective of our hegemonies, you know, our... Of our, course, yeah. all of us, yeah. yes. So... Mercedes, what about your private life? Tell me about, <laughs> please, <laughs> you live in the Hamptons. That's, that sounds that's so provocative. It's on, I'm thinking, the Hamptons. Oh, we what make shall it I big. release here? <laughs> um, I live in the Hamptons. I lived in New York City until um, uh, 2001, mm -hmm. uh, at which time um, the, the man that I was with, we, we had been living together for a year, David Geyser, who was an a, a extraordinary painter. And uh, my mom uh, died, and my son Jake was born, and um, uh, my dad, who was paraplegic, uh, was either going to have to go into some kind of professional or semi-professional mm -hmm. care, yeah. or come and live with me. So all of a sudden, we thought, well, we've got to get a big place, yes. and um, uh, a, a place as big as we needed in New York City was, you know, pretty... <laughs> Pretty impossible. Yeah, we would have to uh, uh, buy the plaza or something. Yeah. So um, uh, we, we moved out here, mm -hmm. and uh, it was wonderful and continues to be wonderful. Mm -hmm. And we found a real community of writers and artists mm -hmm. and, and actors uh, it's a who are little, here year-round. It's a little community, yes. Yeah. Hampton yeah. is actually a relatively small community, and we are actually pretty normal people. You know, we don't want to be... Uh, uh, pulled over on the street and say, oh, Miss Rule, keep on going. We don't give you a ticket. We want to be treated like normal people here. Yes, well, they, 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 they don't give me, they don't do that for me. <laughs> 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 they see me as good for a ticket. <laughs> Lucy, how do you like the schools out here? I mean, obviously you put your son into school, uh, East Hampton. He's, a, he's actually at the hay ground now. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. And that is a small community within a small community. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. I was at a dinner party on Saturday night, some uh, previous and, and current Hayground parents, mm -hmm. and uh, I understood that my young son, who to me is still at 12, a baby, um, was seen kissing a girl oh. in East Hampton <laughs> last week. Well, this is news to mama. Uh, so, yeah, so it's a small community. It's, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. And I've loved it. And David has loved it and Jake has loved it. We're all thinking we may need to go back into New York City for high school at this point. And uh, Jake is looking to uh, spend a few years in a larger community, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, explore the, 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 all the possibi possibilities that New York holds and provides yes. Yes. for people. So we have to take one more that. break. I need a little water. I sent you guys to the refrigerator, and we are staying here at Granny's Inn. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. 
with Mercedes Rule Academy Award winning actress, a Hampton resident who is here at Gurney's Inn overlooking the ocean on the American Dream Show. Mercedes, we were just talking in the break about Edward Albee and working with Edward. Everybody out here in the Hamptons, of course, sees him and you probably do so as a neighbor. Edward the neighbor. But what's it like to work with him? Well, you know, the funny thing about Ed Edward was um, uh, I first met him through Irene Worth, whom I did uh, uh, Lost in Yonkers with. Yes. And I went to his famous Christmas mm -hmm. party, and she introduced me, and I was trying to be tremendously, I was trying to be a fascinator, you know. Mm -hmm. I was so uh, thrilled to meet Edward Albee. And um, he didn't buy my fascinator act at all. And I could tell he was looking at me through hooded eyes. He looks eyes. right into your yes, soul. Yes, yes, yes. And he doesn't put up with any BS. Uh, so I, I went down on the on the elevator later with um, uh, Irene, and I said, well, hum, 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 hum. He, was, he was not terribly friendly, was he? And she just looked at me, and she laughed. Um, two years later, I'm in an audition for uh, the play about the baby, a play that he did uh, off-Broadway. I go in. I, I read the, the, the script for him. I, I do a terrible job. Uh, we talk You knew. You felt. I knew it was bad. Okay. I knew it was bad. I knew it wasn't awful, but I knew. Mm. Uh, and I, I tried to engage him in conversation uh, about uh, uh, matters endemic to both of our families, and he was not really having any of that. And I was then ushered out of the audition room, and I stood out by the elevator fighting back tears, thinking, oh, dear, two strikes. And I'm, you know, with Edward Albee, and God, you couldn't have done much worse in there. And I'm, I'm like, really trying not to cry. Cut to about two years later, and I have been asked to do Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf mm. with Patrick Stewart yeah. at the Guthrie Theater. He comes out and sees the first dress rehearsal. Patrick's done it before. He's got all the lines. We've had less than four weeks rehearsal. It's like trying to memorize the Bible. I go out there more terrified than I've ever been in my entire life, and Albee's there. Ah. Oh, it was awful. I mean, I, I wish that I was in, you know, Costa Rica and uh, any place, but not there at the Guthrie. Um, after the show, there's a knock at my door, and this man is standing there, and it's um, uh, Albee. And he walks in, and I'm standing there. And he said, in the softest voice, he said, hello, dear. And he took me in his arms. And um, all of a sudden, you know, he's about the same height, maybe a little bit shorter than I am. And my, my, my face was sort of like in his neck. And I thought, what do I do? Yeah. I thought, I guess I, guess, I, guess I kiss his neck. And then I went, Mwah. And then I thought, oh, God, it was so inappropriate. I just kissed Edward Albee's neck. <laughs> Well, that began what has become a kind of a friendship yeah. against enormous odds. Um, <laughs> and um, he came and he said, that was good. That was good. He said, just remember one thing. She loves her father passionately. And I went, okay. She loves her father passionately. So I went on to do it. And uh, then he remembered that performance and he asked me to do The Goat on Broadway, which was fascinating. Um, a huge carfuffle over the goat and how we present this goat to the audience. And uh, we tried it about seven different ways from Sunday through the previews before we actually got. And that, that was my first real kind of like um, conflict. With but you had input. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, it, it took a lot of courage to stand my ground and say, I, Edward, I just can't carry this thing in like this. You know, the audience, it was a dead goat. I mean, it was a big dead goat. And um, his idea was, you come in with this goat over your shoulders, right? The goat is this big, and it weighs like uh, 150 pounds. And I said, I'm not taking that thing, and, and it's all full of dirt. Yes, on my shoulders. it's a goat. And carry it in. So I carry it in. It's the, it's the invited dress rehearsal. I carry it in. The audience starts <laughs> laughing like this. <laughs> and so I have to bring it down the steps, and it's heavy. And I'm thinking, oh, this is just not working. So then I have to hand it over to Bill Pullman. This dead, now, the goat is symbolic of something very powerful. Yes. You know, it's a very serious yes. play in many ways. Very yes. funny, but very serious. And this is supposed to be the Greek moment. That, you know. And uh, I had this line w <laughs> before I handed it over to, to Bill, and I said, you were right about her eyes. And the, and the audience started to laugh a little more. 
And then I had to say, she had such beautiful eyes. Well, the audience just convulsed. You could hear them falling out of their seats. And Bill takes the goat. We're trying to make this moment really, really serious. And it, the, the, the harder we try to control that audience, the more they go insane. So for the next three days, we tried to figure out how to bring that goat on. And <laughs> everybody was yelling at everybody. <laughs> oh, my God. And uh, um, uh, we finally figured out a way to do it and tame the audience to the moment, uh, which was not a risible moment. It wasn't a, f a funny moment. But um, that's uh, when I found um, it, it, it takes a lot of courage. But once in a while, you even have to stand up to the Albies of this world. Not yeah. that there's any other Albies in this world. There's yeah, one. There's only one. And, uh, but he the one you kissed on his neck. The one I kissed on the neck. And uh, he was, but he was tremendous about it. And uh, um, he, uh, uh, he finally, he hears everybody. Um, and, uh, and then he decides what he's going to do. Uh, so after that, uh, the goat, I did a play about Louise Nevelson uh, called Occupant that mm -hmm. he wrote. Lu he and Louise Nevelson had been very close friends. Mm -hmm. And so that was uh, a wonderful experience, too. And we've just spoken recently about maybe doing uh, Virginia Woolf in Chicago and Washington, although mm. I don't know if that's going to happen. That means happen. you have to travel, yes. Travel, mm. very difficult yeah. play again, and, and with my son yes. about to turn 13. So, you know, there's a lot. Motherhood comes in there. Oh, Mercedes <laughs> Rule, Academy Award-winning American Dream Woman she is. Hey, Thank guys, you. bye. <laughs> Thank you for the great show. Pleasure. Stand by. I found a new life in America.